Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids. Today we're going to be talking about 10 gentlemen's knives. And the reason I want to do this uh, on video and get your comments on this video is because I'm trying to figure out what exactly is a gentleman's knife. I've been looking around the internet, looking at various definitions, but it seems like people are not totally clear on what it is. So I want you to help define what a gentleman's knife is. Uh, what I have in front of me is one that I think fits that category very nicely. It's the CRKT Crossbones designed by Jeff Park. And then off camera, we've got nine others. So we're going to look at this one and then talk about these other nine. So in total, 10 gentlemen's knives. You tell me which ones you think fit and don't fit into that category. So a little bit about this knife. Uh, blade length, 3.536 inches. It is obviously a plain edge, uh, no serrations. It is Aus 8 steel, which for me is a great win. Uh, I like CRKT's designs a lot, but sometimes they choose steels that I'm just not huge fans of. Aus 8 is a good, um, it's leaning toward budget. It may not be super budget, but it's leaning towards bu toward budget. And it's a good, it's a good overall steel, I think, for a knife like this. Uh, your blade thickness, 0.124 inches. Your close length is 4.5 inches. And your total open length, 8.063 inches. Your weight is 2.4 ounces. It does have a 6061 aluminum tumbled handle. They officially say 6061 aluminum tumbled, bead blast, and then gray hard anodized. So um, it's just a cool looking knife. Very sleek, very slick. Um, it's just, it's fun to open. It's fun to deploy. It does have the flipper there. That's the only way to deploy. It opens up really smoothly, really quick. It's just a cool looking knife. It does have the IKBS system, which is cool as well. There's your pocket clip. You can see it's going to be tip up right hand and you can't flip it around to either side or, you know, tip up, tip down. So you got basically one option. I guess it's going to meet the variety of most people's needs. Um, you do have a tiny little lanyard loop there. It's not a hole. It's a little kind of cut out there uh, down at the base of the knife. So having EDC this knife, I used it and I thought, yeah, you know, this really fits into the category of a gentleman's folder for me. Let me tell you what those kind of broad definitions are. When I've used this knife, I'm not using it super aggressively. I'm using this as a, you know, if it's light, medium, and heavy duty work, this is definitely light. I think most gentlemen's folders, or almost all gentlemen's folders, are gonna be tending toward that. You're not gonna do super aggressive uh, work with them. Key for me for a gentleman's folder is that I can wear this. It's sleek, it's slim, it's slick. I can wear it with a pair of khakis or dress pants. I don't have to wear cargo pants or jeans or tactical pants, just a standard pair of, you know, khakis or dress pants, and it's not going to feel like it's, you know, making my, my leg uncomfortable, taking up my entire my entire pocket or whatever. So that's another thing uh, for me. Again, not really fancy. You can't have a ton of frills for me for a gentleman's, a gentleman's knife. It's the type of knife I think when I take it out and if I deploy it, people are going to go, oh, that's like a nicer, you know, an upgrade to a Swiss Army knife or a pocket knife. Um... But they don't look at it and go, oh my gosh, like what the heck is that thing? That thing is just huge or too aggressive or whatever it might be. So that's, that's kind of my definition of a gentleman's folder. And this one fits nicely into it. I want to hear from you guys what you think a gentleman's folder is. Uh, so definitely leave some comments. And now let's roll in uh, these other knives so you can see ones that I think might fit into that category. All right, we're going to leave the crossbones in there. And we'll just bring the rest of these knives in and then out of frame. First one is this. This is the Boker Quaken. Now... For me, this is like on the edge, probably leaning toward not so much a, uh, a gentleman's folder. The reason is it's 4.27 ounces. That's a bit heavy, and you can get it not in this orange color. You can get it in other colors, but that orange just grabs attention. So that, for me, is, you know, that, that kind of says, eh, it has a similar design and kind of look, but it, I like the knife, don't get me wrong, but as far as being a gentleman's knife, I don't think this thing, I don't think this one makes the cut. Here's the next one. This is the Kershaw Skyline. It's kind of a... A classic from years ago. A lot of people love this knife. You can get it. I think they have jade handles. They had like a Damascus, um, a Damascus blade as well. This one fits into it for me. The blade is a little bit wide. I usually think of a little thinner blade for a uh, gentleman's folder. So the Kershaw Skyline, I think it qualifies as a gentleman's knife. Um, it, it may be a little bit too plain, honestly. It's not kind of fancy enough maybe to be a gentleman's folder. Let's hear what you guys think about that. So that's number two, or I guess number three if you include that. Next up, the Osborne 940. This definitely qualifies for me um, based on the weight, the size, the overall structure. The one thing that makes it pop a little bit is that green handle, and then you've got the uh, the purple backspacer there. I yeah, that kind of puts it on the edge for me as well. I do think you know if this was straight black, I think they have one with carbon fiber that would qualify as a gentleman's knife for me. The cool thing about the Osborne is that it can be a gentleman's knife, a solid EDC knife. I know people have used this as a basic outdoor knife or you know kind of a utility knife when they're when they're out, that strong access access lock system actually makes it 
you know, it has a variety of uses. So anyhow, the Osborne 940, what do you think about that? Let's hear if you think that is a gentleman's holder. This one's from Shree. This is, I think they call it the Land Shark, S-E-H-A-N-S, -S, or 9S. So it does have serrations, but they are a little bit unique. They're not just your standard serrations. Um, this one really pops open. It is an assisted frame lock. And when you when you deploy it, I mean, it really, it comes, it comes open nicely. So is that a gentleman's folder? Again, to me, that's very sleek, very slick, small, low profile, lightweight. So let's hear what you guys think about that. This next one, the look of it maybe, but the weight, not so much. This is the Carter Prime. Um, from Ontario Knife Company. Again, very kind of sleek, slick look, doesn't have a lot of you know bells and whistles. It's just heavy. The weight of it is significant. So um, because it is weighty, I'm like, ah, I don't know if that qualifies for me as a, um, as a gentleman's folder. It's got a very industrial look to me, but, um, but I do think that one is, uh, I do think that one is a little bit hefty. This next one I feel confident, definitely gentleman's knife. This is one of my go-tos, uh, you know, when I've got to dress up. This is one of the trappers from Boker, uh, from Boker, very lightweight. Um, it's it's light. I think it's the lightest knife of all the ones I have here. I like this one a lot. This one is, is fun to uh, also to flip open. It's a liner lock and uh, does have just that little tab there, but it's it's opens really smoothly. Smoothly VG10 is your steel, and um, yeah. So that Boker trapper and they have this in a couple different versions. They have one with a skeletonized handle, I believe. So that for me undoubtedly falls into the uh, the gentleman's gentleman's knife category. This one's a little different because it's a pocket knife; it doesn't have a clip. But this is an, an Opinel. Lots of different versions of this. I almost brought one out that's basically the whole thing open is about as big as the blade. But you know, classy. This one's got some cool um, sket or etchings into it of you know like a, a vine there. Actually, my um this is a number. What is this? A number seven? Yeah, number seven. Let me check, let me see here. Yeah, number seven. Uh, my nephew, who lives in France, actually got this for me. Open L is kind of a classic pocket knife over there, so that would qualify for me. You know, I'm again. I'm thinking if I took this out at a uh, a dinner party to to cut something for somebody, would they be like, "Oh my gosh, you've got a huge knife"? Would be like, "Oh yeah, it's just a cool pocket knife." So Open L number seven. Next up here we have this, which is the Sog Vulcan, and that's VG10 steel. Um, I think this could qualify maybe as a gentleman's knife. The reason I I, I would have questions at least, uh, it's got kind of a wide blade. I generally think of a thinner profile for the blade and kind of a wide handle too. Also because it's got that black handle and then it's got you know just a lot of accents with the metal popping out that might get some attention. Um, again, I think if you took this out at a dinner party to cut something versus that, the uh, crossbones would definitely get less attention. So let's hear your thoughts on that one. And the last one, this is a little bit unique. This is the Tac Rays from Tops, and the reason I put that in there just because it's based off the old school, you know, friction folders like a razor that a barber would have. So um, I do think if you took this out at a dinner party, people might be like, oh, dude, what are you doing? Like, let's just kind of grab some attention. It is definitely bigger and beefier, but the fact that it looks like a, a barber's razor might get some attention. Um, the other thing is because of uh, Sw the Sweeney Todd movie that was out a handful of years ago, I wonder if people be like, you know, they see that and like, oh my gosh, I feel threatened by that because in the movie he's like killing people with, you know, barber razors or whatever. So, um, yeah, anyhow, that's the last one in these 10 that I'm asking you to give me feedback. Do you think these are gentlemen's folders? So here's a look at two knives that I think undoubtedly for me fall into the gentleman's folder category. And even out of these two, um, I've been using the uh, trapper a lot, but the crossbones, that just, it scratches the itch for me when it comes to what I'm looking for in a very sleek everyday carry knife that could also qualify as a gentleman's folder. This one has been a lot of fun uh, to EDC to use. First time, again, I saw it at Shot Show, I was like, that is just a cool looking knife. So I look forward to continuing to EDC the uh, crossbones and let's hear from you guys again in those comments. What do you think a gentleman's folder is and of these knives, which ones were actually, you know, do they fit into that gentleman's folder category? Again, for me, confidently, uh, the, the Boker Trapper and this one, the other one's a little bit more on the edge. All right, guys, thanks for uh, checking out the video and uh, links to all these knives are down below if you're interested in purchasing any of them and uh, stay tuned for more videos. All right, guys, take care.